What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another daily video for you guys today. Today we're going to be talking about Kai Havertz and some small developments in the Kai Havertz transfer saga. Nothing too much, we're just going to talk about it a little bit towards the end. But through most of this video we're going to be talking about Jan Oblak and there's rumours going around that there could be a potential swap deal for Jan Oblak with Kepa going the other way and around 90 to 100 million euros. Yep. Don't restart this video, you guys have it, have heard it correctly. Odd Black going one way and Kappa going the other way. Uh, we're going to be talking about the rumours and every other issue surrounding this deal. And we're also going to talk about pros and cons of this potential Kappa and Odd Black swap deal in this video. So if you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And also don't forget to press the bell notification button to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content. Now... Let's go straight into the news now. Chelsea have made Jan Oblak their number one goalkeeper target this summer. And Oblak has a 120 million release clause. And Chelsea are trying to use Kepa as part of the deal to try and lower it to at least under 100 million. Now, quotes from Diego Simeone have only helped to fuel a little bit of hope for this. That he could actually be coming to Chelsea. I'll be real. When I first heard this, I thought this was just some... Sun BS stuff that they put on their back page just to try and get a couple clicks but the more you look at it and the more you look into the uh, issues surrounding this and the reasons why this deal could actually be happening is the more I'm starting to warm up to it and the more I'm starting to actually get some belief into it. The first thing I'm going to give is Diego Simeone's quotes where he's kind of fueled hope for Chelsea a little bit. He said he is a decisive player for us. But he is the captain in our participation every year in the Champions League helps us keep our best players. So I hope he will continue with us. That last part is very hopeful. He says, I hope he will continue with us. That is nothing definitive. That doesn't even sound that confident in my opinion. And Jan Oblak's comments last January only helped to heighten the belief behind this. Because there was rumours of Oblak leaving for the Premier League last summer. And I think we were interested in him as well a little bit when Courtois left us in 2018. But it was just too little too late at that point. I'm going to go into that as well. But um, Oblak had some comments last January as well when uh, moves to the Premier League didn't materialise for him. He said, the Premier League is interesting, it's attractive, and at some stage I may want to be part of that competition. I can see myself there, but I don't know when. Maybe next year, in two years, five or ten. Now, he has basically just said that he is interested in playing in the Premier League, but in the future. That, that was only a couple months ago, so it's not too far into the future, but... Even in the case of Jan Oblak, all this does say to me is that he does see himself in England in the future. So if we are that interested in Jan Oblak, why don't we just make it quicker? Why don't we just pursue it now? The final reason why I kind of believe this deal could actually happen is Atletico Madrid's financial situation. Now, right now, as it stands, Atletico have the highest paid manager in Diego Simeone, who's earning £8.9 million, million pounds a year. And I think that rounds up to about €10 million Euros a year. They just signed Jao Felix on a £113 million deal last season. They owe over £180 million to their owner and they are already still paying off the money towards their new stadium, the Wanda Metropolitano. As well as the ongoing as well as the ongoing implications of the pandemic and the lockdown that surrounded the whole of Europe over the last couple of months, and the amount of losses that nearly every club is making as a result of this, Atletico Madrid are in huge problems. And I think if you're rounding up all of those problems together, it makes sense that they might need to start selling some some of their best assets to try and make up some of the cash that they've lost over the last couple years. Now, me personally. I've been a very big supporter of Kepa this season. Even throughout the bad form and everything and his awful stats, which I'll be real, as much as I try to defend him, those stats just keep sucker punching me in the face. And my Kepa agenda has taken a huge hit this season. But if someone like Oblak is on the market and we can go and get him, I'm doing a complete 180. Because Oblak is one of the best keepers in the world and he's probably created a legendary legacy for himself at Atletico Madrid in the six years they spent there. The guy came in as a replacement to Thibaut Courtois, who was one of their best goalkeepers ever at the time, even though he was on a three-year loan deal from us, and he surpassed his legacy. In, in about, probably done, he did it before the three years that Courtois left as well. The guy is a huge quality goalkeeper. 
And if he's there in the market for us to take, we have to take him. It's another one of those players that you just simply can't say no to. As well as our position as well. With every other club suffering right now because of the implement... Impl implications of the pandemic sorry was struggling to get out of my mouth but with the implications of this pandemic and most clubs suffering Chelsea are one of the few clubs that aren't suffering because of our transfer ban because of the hazard money that we haven't spent because the Morata money from Atletico Madrid that should be coming in as well so with all of this in mind it does sound like it's a bit of a possibility I can't lie I didn't believe it at the start but all of these other factors coming around it starts becoming a little bit more realistic if you think about it. Now, um, there's a couple pros and cons of this deal. I, I think it's obvious by now which side I am for this. But uh, let's go through the pros and we'll go through some of the cons as well. Because we want to try and keep this level-headed. And I'm sure there's some people... Actually, I don't even think there's some people who'd say no to this deal. I think the vast majority of people watching this would say yes to this deal if it was on the table. But we're still going to look at the pros and cons of this anyway. The first pro, which is just obvious, it secures one of the best keepers in the world at Chelsea. And it would need to be sanctioned by the goalkeeping oversight chief, Petr Cech. And it would need to be sanctioned by Frank Lampard as well. But with Frank Lampard's issues with Kepa this season, you remember early in January and February where he dropped Kepa to the bench for a significant number of games and Willy Caballero took it, took it in between the sticks. Didn't really impress, but didn't really do much worse either. But with both of those, but with those factors and the fact that he is one of the best keepers in the world, I don't really see either Lampard or Petr Cech saying no to it. The second pro is the stigma of Kepa's lack of success would disappear with this transfer. Maybe not so much if it becomes a loan to buy deal, which is something that would be would be we could see it happening because it did happen with Alvaro Morata last season and doing that with Morata has kind of set a precedent now. And I also think with Atletico's financial problems that we did speak about earlier, it does seem like a more realistic deal that Kepa would go in as a loan to buy deal at the end of his contract. Um, Kepa should be with us for about another three, four years, I think. It will probably end up being like another two to three year loan with an obligation to buy at the end of it. But I can see Atletico trying to do something like that to try and push back the transfer fee a couple years because like we said, they have their financial problems. But that's another positive. The stigma of Kepa's lack of success and the 70 million transfer fee that came with it would be gone. And we also would have a better keeper at probably a more expensive price. But let's be real, would you rather have Oblak as your most expensive keeper than Kepa if we are being honest? The third one is that we may be cooling off on Ben Chilwell as a result of this. Now, we already got Hakim Ziyech at 36 million. We already got Timo Werner at about... Was it 50? It was around the 50 something million mark. If we get Jan Oblak at 100 million euros as well, there's no way we're spending another 60 million on Ben Chilwell. Like, we got money, but we ain't just shitting money or anything like that. It's completely different. So. It does mean we might be cooling off on Ben Chilwell. And I have said, I wouldn't mind Ben Chilwell coming at Chelsea. He's a good left back and he's great going forward as well. But 60 million, he is not worth it. Not at that fee. I think that's a huge bump. And I think if this sort of deal means that we have to look at someone more frugal and a bit and someone who's a bit more of a sens sensible target, go for it. That kills two birds with one stone, in my opinion. Moving on to cons now, not a lot of cons because, I mean, come on, this deal sounds amazing enough as it is, but the first one is that this move acknowledges the mistake of signing Kepa in the first place, which to be fair was a very rushed decision without a lot of scouting taking place. We tried moving for Allison in 2018, but we were too slow and I think we just took ages of negotiations and he went up going to Liverpool instead. Courtois ended up becoming a massive snake and went AWOL in training because he got a bit gassed over the World Cup. Up, and he ended up going to Real Madrid straight away and we had about just under a week or so to find a new keeper and that ended up, ended up with us getting bent over a barrel by Athletic Bilbao for Kepa in a £70 million deal. Selling him after this season and how bad this season's been for Kepa only acknowledges that we made a huge mistake but in my opinion sometimes you do have to acknowledge that you made mistakes and even in the case of Chelsea's transfer activity over the last couple of years our activity has been awful and I think if we have to acknowledge we made a mistake with Kepa we need to acknowledge we made a mistake with plenty of other uh, signings as well and the second one is that Chelsea will make a massive loss on Kepa regardless 
I think best case scenario is us trying recouping at least half of that. If Kepa could take 35 million off the Oblak deal, that would be our best case scenario. But even in that case, we'll probably be saddled with part of his wages as, as the deal, especially if it's a case of a loan to buy option and especially with the case of Atletico's financial situation, we might need to help them out with some of his wages. And if we have to, it's gonna be another kick in the teeth. But again, if we get Jan Oblak, I think in the long term, it will be a much better decision for us. Uh, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below whether you think this is a good deal for us or not. I'm going to talk about Kai Havertz a little bit, but I'm not going to make it last too much because there haven't been a lot of developments in the Kai Havertz situation. People are saying that he's now um, chosen Chelsea FC as his main option, but I mean, come on, we kind of knew that for weeks, especially with his main other suitors being Bayern Munich, who have already signed Leroy Sane and also need to save money as well, and Real Madrid, who have too many midfielders and need to sell before they can buy. Both of those both of those clubs would rather he waits another year at Bayer Leverkusen before going to, before picking his club, but he wants to leave now because he, because he feels like he can take the next step right now. Which is why Chelsea already looks like the obvious choice for him. Um, I know Leverkusen don't want to get rid of him until their Europa League camp. Cam uh, I know Leverkusen don't want to get rid of him until their Europa League, League campaign is up. But that was just a bit more obvious in my opinion. Werner wanted to come straight away, but with Havertz, I could understand with the way Werner's left. They would want to be a lot more solid with how they keep him and they're going to be a lot more straight up and just say we're keeping you to the end of the season and that is that. Werner had signed before he made that decision so it was in Werner's, the ball was in Werner's court by then. But there isn't really a lot of news on Kai Havertz, that's why I didn't want to focus too much the video on him because I'd just be talking and waffling for ages about nothing really because that's basically all that's happened with the Kai Havertz deal so far. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my points, let me know if you want to see Yanob black at Chelsea I feel like a silly question to ask but just let me know down in the comment section if you think any differently let me know your thoughts on the Kai Havertz deal as well and I will see you guys tomorrow for another video take care and up the Chelsea